Y'all see this glow though? What's up beautiful? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Lisa May and this is Thinking Beauty where we dive into all things politics, pop culture, and personal development. This week we are going to dive into a pop culture video. Y'all know I love my pop culture videos. Hopefully you all love them just as much as I do because they really are my favorite, you know, to produce. So I hope you all like them as much as I do. They're probably not the best right now, but you know, stick with me, they'll get better. <laughs> but yeah, this week for the Hot Topics, I love this lineup. It's pretty much all about TV. I think it's only fitting that this video we cover The Real Housewives of Potomac because when I first started these videos, I think that was one of the first Hot Topics that I did. Okay, so this season was pretty interesting like I don't have any like significant commentary on it um, one of the things I said in my first video about the Real Housewives of Potomac I don't know if it actually made it into the video but I was saying that I hope that the beef between Giselle and Karen wasn't like gonna play out I hope that I hope that it wasn't gonna like last long and get ugly because I felt like Karen and Giselle like really are good um, you know, like avs adversaries, especially for like the sake of TV. So I hope that it just like stayed there with them just kind of like throwing shade at each other. And I'm happy that it did. One of the things that I thought was like, I don't know, interesting, weird, whatever, but like the season closed with basically Michael and Juan going out on a date. Like, of course, it wasn't like a real date. They were double dating, um, you know, with each other, like the couples, Ashley and Michael and Robin and Juan. But I just thought it was really weird that like, you know, they're kind of like playing out this storyline or not like an official storyline, but kind of like an under storyline of like, you know, Michael being attracted to Juan and like only caring about Juan. So like the fact that they will like close it out with a date with them, it's just like weird. Like why is why is Juan playing into this and why is Robin playing into it? But you know, all in all, the season was good. I honestly, I think the biggest thing about the season is the reunion that's going to take place next week, next Sunday. So it's going to be a four part reunion. But what really has like the tongues wagging is Nicki Minaj is actually going to host like a segment of it. Apparently, you know, she kind of like rips and reads everybody. Like she spares no one. She comes you know, she comes out guns blazing. I just would love to hear her commentary based on her raps. I can just imagine like the shade that she would throw and basically how she would kind of like, get to the bottom of some things. I really think it's gonna be interesting because clearly like all of the ladies really respect um, Nicki Minaj. So it's gonna be interesting to see them just kind of sit there and like swallow that pill, you know? So yeah, so that's The Real Housewives of Potomac. Next up, there is a new series on ABC that streams on Hulu called Queens. Honey, I am loving this show. It stars Eve, one of my favorite rappers, Brandy, Notori Naughton, um, and like some other people, but it's really like those three for me. But basically they were like a former rap group like back in the day and they reunite, you know, later, like I guess like 20 years down the line and they reunite and basically, you know, kind of go on like a war world tour or whatever. And it's just them, you know, embarking on like that journey. You know, I think it has like the capability to be a little like cheesy in parts, but honestly for me, it's the fact that I get to hear Eve rap. Um, Brandy, who, you know, is a really good actress, she really is bringing it as far as like the intensity and like the fire with her being a rapper. Um, her character is, I think it's called Explicit Lyrics. Um, and you know, she really is bringing the heat and the fire and I enjoy seeing her um, stretch like that. And one of the things that I really enjoy about seeing actors and actresses in their craft is I like when you can tell that they're bringing it, but it doesn't look like they're bringing it. You can just tell because you get so caught up in the character, like you really believe it. You forget that you're looking at Brandy or Eve or whoever, and you just get you know caught up in the character and you appreciate it. But like I said, I really appreciate this show already. I can tell that you know it's going to be one of my favorites just because I love music. Um, like I said, I love Eve, so to hear her rap. Oh, and then also one of the things about Eve, y'all. So, I'm sure you all know by now, but if you didn't, Eve is pregnant. She is pregnant expecting her first child. That's really exciting. I'm really happy for her. It actually really does kind of bring me hope to see her, um, 
you know, pregnant because, you know, I don't have children. I do want children. Um, you know, I'm not in my 20s anymore. <laughs> so sometimes I kind of like worry about that. Like, dad, did I miss my window? Is it too late? So it's always like inspiring and like, you know, kind of comforting when you see women over 30 who have children for the first time. But yeah, so that's this show. Check that out if you haven't checked it out. Let me know what you think about it. If you think that it's something that you could enjoy or if you think it's going to be cheesy and like you can't get past the cheesy aspect of it. Okay, so next up, one of my faves, the Woo Saga series. They had their season finale on Wednesday, which was really good. I, this season was really good. I hope you tuned in because if you did, RZA gave us some gems. Like he really taught us how to kind of like build this empire. One of the things that I picked up, um, you know, it's really important to surround yourself either with a team or at least someone who will push you to take risk. One of the things that he teaches is to create your own demand and create your own buzz. So basically that's what they did. When they were first starting, nobody knew who Wu-Tang was. People didn't care. People only cared if you were on the label or like if the label were, was backing you. Like that's all they cared about. So they had to get really creative in how they presented themselves to the world and how they put themselves out there and so they really did create their own demand um the episode airwaves we get to see that where you know they walk into the to the record store and they're like yo you heard that new Wu-Tang you know the guys like the guy who I guess owns the store he had never heard of them but like you know he sees all these people and they're asking about us and now he wants to like buy the thing buy the records but of course the people are that are in there doing this are the, the members of Wu-Tang so I just thought that was really genius um you know I'm really taking heed to that hopefully you take heed to that too honey create your own demand and create your own buzz and get creative with it okay Another thing that I noticed and really appreciated is that everyone, all of the members, like really played their position. You know, no one was too good for anything. Like, even though they kind of felt like, well, I got to do this, you know, like they still did it. They were all committed to the vision and they all played their position. And it, you know, it turned out to work. It turned out to, to, to be a winner for them. I would attribute this to Riza and the fact that he had already had a record deal before as Prince Hakeem. But one of the things that I noticed is that they didn't leave their fate in the hands of someone else. And like I said, I think RZA was aware of that because when he was signed originally, you know, that's what he did. His fate was kind of in the hands of like the labels. So I think he really learned from that experience. And he, you know, I guess he, you know, chose or committed not to do that into the group. So basically going back to what I was saying about everyone playing their position, you know, and creating their own demand, like they really did take their fate into their own hand. They didn't wait for anyone to give them an opportunity. They didn't wait for anyone to give them a give them direction. If anything, the only direction that they took came from RZA. And um, actually, that's something else that we really get to see, which actually, if I ever had like the opportunity to have a conversation with RZA, I would want to ask him like, because he made a choice and I'm not going to tell you too much because if you haven't seen that I really do want you to go back and watch it but he kind of took ODB's fate into his own hands at one point and I just wonder if he regrets it in, in, in any way um, you know especially given the fate of ODB so I would just be like really curious um, about that and I think maybe we'll probably see that a little bit more in like the next season see how that panned out because honey ODB was not happy <laughs> another thing that I took from this season is you really do have to see the bigger picture you really do have to like see beyond you got to see beyond the present moment you have to be able to see beyond present circumstances and you have to be able to see down the road to the bigger bigger picture and you have to I guess like be focused enough to make decisions in the moment that will that align with where you see down the road if i articulated that right i hope i did but um yeah girl if you haven't seen it like go check it out it's really good even if you're not a wu-tang fan i was not a wu-tang fan i honestly feel like this series is making me a wu-tang fan um but yeah it's just really good especially if you are trying to build something um, if you are working towards something, especially something that you've never done before or, or you don't have like a lot of help um, with, I really think this um, this series is, does a really good job of like providing a blueprint that you can follow. 
So yeah, go check it out. Okay, so the next show is Our Kind of People by Lee Daniels. I mean, it's actually based on a book by Lawrence Otis Graham. Um, I actually read the book, or at least like read half of the book, like a few years ago, actually like back in 2007 before I moved to Atlanta. Um, and it was like really interesting. It's, um, it was interesting to see how like the black middle, I'm sorry, the black upper class, I believe like how they formed, you know, just like some of their, their ways and things that they did, some of their traditions. So this show stars Yaya DaCosta. If you remember her, she was the runner-up um, of America's Next Top Model. She was a runner-up to Eva, Eva Marcel. And, you know, since then, I think she's done, like, a bit of acting. I think she acted in a movie with Antonio Banderas. I think she's probably acted in a lot more movies. Um, but now she's in this show, and I think she's really good. Um, she's, she's given an intensity. Um, you know, she, her character is very, like, mysterious. You know, you kind of wonder like what her angle is. And so basically what it is, is um, a woman, her, who goes back to, I guess, Martha's Vineyard, if I'm not mistaken, Oak Bluffs. Um, she goes back to Oak Bluffs to start a hair salon that was kind of like passed down to her from her mother. But as is with a lot of families, I guess maybe a lot of like black upper class families there's like a lot of secrets a lot of things that you don't know because you know everyone is concerned about like protecting their image they don't want the wrong things to get out so they you know they cover up a lot of stuff um so i think by her coming back she's like uncovering like some secrets um and like she is actually tied into one of the other families um it's just pretty interesting it's pretty good um it's her, her mother figure, and her daughter. So you know, being that the being that the series covers this book, which the book is not a um, a, a fiction book, it's a nonfiction book. Like it really does document and chronicle like the black upper class. A few people take criticism uh, with the show because they feel like it's not an accurate depiction. Um, I am not a member of the black upper class, so I don't know whether it is or isn't. Um, I know that the person who I saw who had a critique, uh, Antonio Moore, you know, he spends a lot of his work revolves around like the racial wealth gap. So I don't know, um, you know, I guess that's what he's saying. I guess, honestly, I don't know. I didn't watch the video. I just know that he said that there were some things that he got wrong, which actually I'll link that video down below if you're interested in checking that out because now I am, I kind of want to go back to see what his criticism is about the show. Um, but one thing that I can say, like, even though I am, like, really curious about um, the racial wealth gap and, like, you know, black progression and things like that, I also am someone, when it comes to, like, television shows and just, like, images in general, like, I like to see things that are, like, aspirational um, when it comes to that, you know, because I am the thinking part of me, like, I'm a learner, I'm a reader, so, like, I can read about a lot of these things like you know what I mean like if you see some of my books like I you know a lot of it present like heavy material you know like black history black progression uh you know socioeconomic or political status and things like that like you know it's a lot of heavy material so clearly like I I appreciate you know facts and data and things like that but when it comes to like a television show I don't mind seeing something you know fanciful I don't mind seeing something you know like outrageous or outlandish because I feel like that gives me something to aspire to and I've always been a person who my mantra like my personal mantra has always been reach for the moon even if you miss you're still among the stars so I don't mind seeing you know black people flying in like private jets like it's a regular you know what I mean like I, I don't mind seeing it that doesn't make me feel like no that's not true da, 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 da. Like, but anyway all in all I'm going to check out um, that video and I would encourage you check out the video as well and if you haven't checked out the the see the series our kind of people check it out um you know just for the acting alone Shem not Shemar, Morris Chestnut is in it and let me just say one of the things that I really do love about the show is that I love shows, and, and I felt like this about being Mary Jane, I love shows that have a rich, melanated cast. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm light-skinned myself, you know? So, like, 
I mean, I, I, I'm not a self-hating person or anything like that, but like, you know, no shades, like light skin folks or whatever, but like sometimes it's just really nice to see richly melanated brown people on TV. Like, I don't know. I just, I'm not a big fan of like colorism. I don't know. I just really appreciate seeing that. And so like you got Yaya Costa, you got Morris Chestnut, you got the daughter, sister, and they're just all like black and beautiful and I love it. Okay, so my next hot topic, BMF. Honey, I've been trying to tell y'all 50 and that green light gang is doing it. They are doing big things. They got their foot on people's neck and they are not letting up. Like they are bringing it and BMF does not disappoint. Um, this show was really good. One of the things that I immediately like noticed about the show that kind of like threw me off for a bit is how young they are. Like these kids are in high school. Like you look at them and look at them. They look like grown people. Like were you dressing like that in, <laughs> in high school? I thought they were like adults. Like the things that they're doing, the moves that they're making, I really thought they were adults, but they are in high school. So yes, yeah, it's, it's another good show. I have to tell you though, like I recently kind of like slowed down on watching it. And the only reason why I did is because, you know, I've been watching like a lot of like gritty, you know, hip hop shows and things like that. Um, and I had to be careful because I felt like my spirit getting a little riled up. And BMF has this character, this guy right here, when I tell you he works my nerves and he like produces so much ire in me, it's not even funny. Like he really irritates me. And I already have like a little bit of Big Meech in me naturally. So like when he like gets me fired up, like I'd be ready to take aim at everybody in my life. You know? So I had to like kind of slow down on BMF, but it's really good. Um, one of the things that I've, I always say this, I appreciate how 50 Cent is, he's able to space out a story where he doesn't put too much in it, where you kind of get lost and don't really understand what's going on. And it's not, it doesn't drag out either. You know, like he, he really does a good way of putting just enough in the story that really kind of keeps you intrigued, compelled to keep watching. And it's just good. It's good writing, it's good directing, it's good storytelling. Um, but like I said, just be careful because this guy right here, <laughs> depending on how you set up, he will irritate your life. And if you set up like me and kind of like Big Meech, <laughs> like, it might not be good. So you might got to like brace yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like watch it and then like for the next three days, just play classical music to like calm your spirit. <laughs> so yes, beautiful. That is all I have this week for you for Hot Topics. Um, like I said, if you've seen any of the shows, uh, feel free to drop down in the comments and let me know what you thought about any of the shows. If there's a show that you're watching that I haven't watched, please put me up on game. I want to know. Like, I love, um, you know, good shows. So please feel free to do that. So I'll see you next week with a personal development video. Um, I, I think the personal development videos from here up until the new year are going to be pretty good because, like, ooh, the stuff that I'm getting, like, the stuff that I'm learning man it's like it's real so until next time lisa may here saying peace love and blessings you see this glow look at this glow get you some look at this my hands feel like silk silk